Welcome to our graphics unit. We will be learning to use a product called PhotoP, which is a knockoff of Photoshop. The products are extremely similar, but PhotoP is available for free in a browser-based tool, which works for our situation right now very well. We're going to be learning a lot of things about this product. And in order to do so, we have a series of projects that will help you learn all the tools and different features of PhotoP. Our first project will be a smiley face. So we're gonna click the word new project and we're going to call it smiley. And in these boxes, you're going to choose 512 by 512 pixels and make the background white. If you were to click on any of these down here, it would give you some other options that are standard features for different things that you could use PhotoP for. Facebook cover page and Instagram, thing, a YouTube thing, a Twitter thing. Um, but we're going to create smiley 512 pixels, 512 white. That's the part you need to know for this project. So once you do that, you will see that you have a, a name up here that says smiley.psd. That is telling you that you gave this project a name. If you didn't give it a name, this still says untitled.psd. And that's okay as well for now. We're going to start by looking at what we have around here in terms of tools and resources. So the first thing, like most applications, the menu bar is at the top. And in the beginning, we're not gonna do a whole lot with this menu bar at the top. We're gonna to do a lot with this toolbar down the side. This toolbar shows all the basic tools that are available in PhotoP. Where there is a, a a little arrow here, that means there's another tool underneath it or behind it. I mean, let me just say behind this tool. And we're going to be using some of the tools that are behind the basic tools because they're all in a, in a classification. So this one here is shapes, is the shapes group and it's rectangle ellipse. We're gonna start with an ellipse here. We're going to be creating a smiley face. So we're going to draw an ellipse. Once we click on any tool here, it resets the second toolbar up here underneath the menu bar. It resets this toolbar with the properties of whatever, uh, whatever tool you're on. So if I click the move, it shows me all the properties of things I can choose for move. If I click the crop, it shows me all the things I can use for crop. In this case, if I click the circle or the ellipse, it shows me all the different things I can use for, for this. I'm gonna pick a color just a plain yellow color for this ellipse. And then I'm going to um, put this back. And I'm going to draw a, an ellipse or circle inside this box. And um, the way that circles work or these ellipses work is they don't have to be symmetrical. So um, if you draw something like this, you, with your, your mouse wide, you're gonna get this oval shape. We want to draw a perfect circle. So because we want it symmetrical, we're going to hold down the shift key while we're drawing. And we have to draw, we have to think about the square we're trying to put this thing in and then sort of uh, go from one diagonal corner, one corner to the other on the diagonal of that square. It doesn't matter if you go from this one to that one, you know, from bottom to top or, 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 um, or, or left top to right bottom or however you want to do it. You have to just take, pick any two diagonals and draw the square that the circle sits in. But if you hold down the shift key first and then drag, you're going to get that. And um, you want your circle to fit inside that box. Now, quick tip. If you have this box filled, but your um, where your actual mouse is, is not a perfect circle and you let go of the control key first, this thing will wonk out on you. You don't want that to do that. So you want to hold down the shift key and you want to let go of your right hand on the mouse first and then let go of the control key or the shift key. I mean, and then the whole thing will show up as a perfect circle. So let go of the mouse first, then the shift key. You will get a perfect circle. Now I'd like to draw your attention over here. Photo P, like all of these photo uh, image editing things, has what's called layers in it. And it's as if you have a white piece of paper on the on the table and you came along and you cut out a circle from a manila envelope and you place the circle on top of the white paper. And now we're gonna do it again. We're gonna place another shape in here and it's gonna start to build some layers in here in on this list. 
But this time we're going to build eyeballs and we want those eyeballs to be black. So, whoops, I'm still on the same shape. That didn't work. So I'm gonna control Z to get rid of that, uh, that choice. And um, control Z, did it work? It did not. Um, I'm going to go over to my um, my history panel, and I'm going to open it up. And you will see that there's a bunch of things here that happened in this history panel. First, I opened this document. Then I, I built an ellipse. It was wonky. I deleted that layer. Then I built another ellipse, and then I went and changed it to black. I didn't really want to do that, so I'm just going to back up to that one. This history panel is so convenient because you can just walk through and get the exact thing that you want at that moment. So I want another ellipse. So I'm already on this tool and I'm on this shape. So it assumes that whatever I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do to this shape, this yellow shape. So to solve this problem, I'm going to add a new layer down here at the bottom. This looks like a sticky note with the corner turned up. And in this new layer, I'm still on this, this thing, but now when I change the color to black, I can draw in this new layer, I can draw a new shape. I don't want this one to be perfectly round. I want it to be an oval. So I'm just gonna do that, let go, and I have a shape. I can rename my layers so that I don't get confused. I'm gonna rename this thing a left eye by double clicking on the, um, on the name of the layer panel. Now I'm gonna take this left eye and I'm gonna right mouse click, not anywhere, not on the word left eye, but I'm gonna out here in the gray area, I'm gonna left uh, right mouse click out there and choose duplicate layer. If you're on a Mac, um, it is whatever you use to right mouse click with, I believe it's command click or something like that. You're a Mac person, you know. And I'm gonna duplicate that layer. And you will see that I have two layers here. Nothing seems to have happened to my smiley face. The reason nothing seems to have ha happened is because these layers are directly on top of one another. So what I need to do is I need to use a different tool, not the ellipse tool anymore, but I need to use the move tool. Now I can click on the word move tool or I can click on the letter V. When you hover here, it tells you if you use this tool, what is the quick, so the quick thing you can do with a keyboard shortcut. So um, it turns out this rectangular select is an M, this uh, magic wand is a W, this thing crop tool is a C, but the move is a V. So I'm going to click V on the keyboard, and then I can just um, start moving this with the arrows also on my keyboard if I want. It's a little slow, so I can also do it with my mouse. I can just grab my mouse. Now the thing about my mouse is it may put this in a weird spot, and I may not want it exactly in that spot. So if I happen to get these a little off, I could select both of these by holding down the shift key, uh, the control key, I'm sorry, and clicking both of these layers. And then because I'm in the move, um, the move tool, the properties of the move tool up here show me what my choices are. And one of them is arranged to the top. I'm going to do that. And both of these objects will be arranged to the, where the top of them will both be on a single horizontal line, uh, an invisible single horizontal line. If I have them both selected, I can also move them together, which is also convenient. All right. So um, at this point, I have both of these selected and I want to, Smiley is learning and having a tough time here. Um, but Smiley needs, it doesn't have a mouth and we have to figure out how to get a mouth in here for Smiley. So we're going to give Smiley another layer by going down here to the layers panel on the right hand side. And we're going to give Smiley a brush. And we're going to brush a mouth on for Smiley. Now, when you come in here, the most important thing you need to know is that it's the, the next thing over shows you 15 in a hard circle. That's showing you what this paintbrush looks like. If you were to grab one of these fuzzy ones and paint it out like this, it would be like a, a, a straight line or something you could paint. I'm going to control Z to get rid of that one. This time control Z worked just fine. Um, I'm going to show you this fuzzy one and I'm going to bring the font size up so maybe you can see it, but it's going to be like a, a, a like a spray paint. It's kind of got fuzzy edges on it. Uh, I'm going to control Z that one out. This, this paintbrush was way too big. So let's try that. You see how fuzzy it is. You don't want a fuzzy line for an icon. You want a hard crisp line. So instead, we're going to take the crisp line here and we're going to bring the 
font uh, the size up to about 40 ish 45 will probably do when you come off uh, off of here you will see that the pixel count is showing you based on the size of the the drawing circle and then when you actually draw that circle you will get the smile that you want um, now we're going to start um, where you are probably starting with this you're probably starting in a space where um, you don't feel too smiley right now you probably feel a little frustrated because most people do the first time they come in here. So we're going to put a real emotion on, on Smiley. We're going to show his first emotion. And his first emotion is not, in fact, the smile. It is a frown. <laughs> so we're going to go back to this move tool. We were on the brush. We're going to go back to the move tool. And we're going to try to turn this frown upside down. We are on this layer one. It says layer one. I'm going to turn it to a mouth. I'm going to call it his mouth. And I want this mouth tool, this mouth to be upside down. So I'm going to go up here to the properties bar of the move tool and turn on the transformation controls. And I'm going to get slightly outside the box in one of the corners and you'll see that you get a, uh, a curvy arrow, which is showing rotation and you can turn this right around. And when you do, um, that may be more consistent with how you feel when you're first trying this. Now, um, you may try to go to some other tools and things and something may be stuck, it might not be working. The other thing you will notice on the Move tool is that it has a, um, a confirm checkbox here. If you didn't want that, you would say X. If you do want that, you will do the checkbox. And the checkbox will set that change in. It says, oh, okay, you want that. Um, the other thing on um, the transformation controls is that you can sort of squish these things, pull them up and down, and you can select um, a, um, a variety of things here. Um, that We'll leave it at that right now. You can pull these up and down. So in case your smile is too big, just squish it a little and make it fit within his space. All right, this is pretty good. We're going to be done. We're going to take that check mark, call this done. We're going to turn off the white background layer. These are these eyeballs will help you turn off any layer so you can focus in on any other layer. So um, I just want to see that. I could turn off the eyes and see that. We're going to turn off the white background layer. And I, this transformation control thing, I don't want to see that anymore. I'm going to turn that off so I don't have to look at it. That's what my picture is going to look like. So. Um, now that I have this, I'm going to save this guy. When I go to save it, I need to public. I need to save it as a Photoshop uh, work file, which is a, a, a PSD, is a Photoshop work file, and that is saving all the information about these layers and what kind of shapes they are, and this was a brush tool, and that was you know all these different names of these layers. All this will be saved in the Photoshop work file. Photoshop work files are not optimized to be shown on the internet. They are optimized only for making changes to Photoshop. So first we're going to save it so we're able to make a change. And when it comes down here, it's going to be whatever name is on this tab, that, that is the name that you started with when you did File New. Um, it may say Untitled, that's fine. You can go to your, your computer and rename it on your computer um, if, you, if you'd like. Um, but this photo, this PSD file not being a finished file isn't, we're, we're not quite done with our job. We want to um, go back to file and we want to export this thing. Because it's a circle, we want to export it as a PNG. That's giving, that's the first choice for us because this background here will be transparent. And if we put this on uh, a desktop or something, you won't get a white, a hunk and white square background behind your circle. You're going to get um, whatever your background images is going to show through, which is great. So we'll take we'll take this PNG, and you can play with the quality here until you see the quality start to to degrade. Because we oh we're not going to get anything there. We want to go to around here. Take the quality way down. And when we get it all the way down to here, just 1%, it's still the exact same picture. But we can see this is only a three kilobyte picture. This will load super fast on the internet. 
If you need to have the highest quality, you can see this is 18 kilobytes. So you can take this down to 18 times smaller. And if you did this over and over and over again on your website, your website would load super fast. Um, I guess maybe it's not one, it's six, six. So we can get three, uh, a threefold um, savings if we bring it from 18 down to six. And we can now click, um, we'll save this PNG as small, as small and as tight as possible. Save. Now, um, we saved it as a PNG. It's coming down with a one on it on here because my computer has already had a smiley face on it, but yours will probably come down as the original smiley. Now, what your task is, is to, to do is to go back to that mouse. Now that you've learned how to do this, go back to the move tool, the transformation controls, and take smiley's mouth, turn it right back up to that smile, because you now know exactly how to use layers. You know how to use the move tool with the transformation controls. You know how to use the ellipse tool. And you even know a little bit about setting colors. And you know a little bit about the history panel here as well. So that's a lot to know on your first day. And so I hope that your frown turned into a smile. You're going to file, export, PNG, save. And now you'll have two of these. You'll attach these these two files from your computer to your uh, assignment on Google Classroom and hit the submit button.